I was, I, was, I was with a crowd that they didn't want to play with the police, joke around with them, you know, that type of thing. Right. So because right. I wanted that type of dude to play with the police, the dude that were playing with them felt offended that we didn't join their slide. So right. those were the ones that told and said, well, this guy the one that did that, I put the crochet needle on your chair. Yeah. And when you sat down, that's why you got stabbed. Wow. So that's how I got caught for that. Yeah, but setup. I had nothing to do with that. They're 36 yeah. to the block with that. The setup. The you setup. Know? So they said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it, mm. you know, down the line, you know, you go ahead and say, you, you meet other brothers there, you, you move to another spot, you come out the box. And the new thing that started was that I said, hold up, man. If I didn't do certain crimes, can you imagine how many people in, in the prison system is, is here for maybe decades and didn't do their crimes either? There's something that I gotta do. Powerful conversation today, man. Oh yeah, we yeah. Got a, we got a real powerful one today, man. So we got uh to my left here, man. You know, no other. Oh, he don't need me. no introduction. You know, <laughs> this the you know he pays he pays the cost to be the boss. You know, <laughs> my forehead, my brother. Yes sir, yes sir. Thank you, my brother. We're here, man. This this is actually gonna be a really good show. Yeah. Um, we're going to get into that for a second, man. Shout out to everybody out there, man, that's been tuning in, subscribing to our pages. Man, we love the support. Continue to keep supporting, man. Sex after the lockdown at gmail.com. Yeah, we starting early. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and, and remember, guys, you know, you might have a brother or sister who's been formerly incarcerated. So support, Absolutely. subscribe, so we can get the word out there and show them that things are possible when they put their mind to change. Um, and with that being said, the brother that we have here today, Abe, um, a.k.a. Live and Direct, Okay, yeah. AKA guys, freedom is a must. Absolutely a must. Y'all see the logos, y'all see the success that's the lockdown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? You see the too. freedom is a must, yeah. right? So we met Abe. I met Abe through TikTok. Been watching and following you on TikTok. Um and we're gonna have a nice little conversation. So with that being said, let me introduce everybody to Abe. Live and direct. It's finally in the building. Freedom we're is here. a must. How what yeah. a door. Uh, yeah, so we got a lot. We got a lot of uh, questions for the brother, man. Um, yeah. First, 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 we are. Uh, we we definitely would like to. Well, I would like to say that you know, uh, uh, in passing, you know, when Anthony told me about you, um, on the uh, on the gram, on the TikTok, I I seen you. We was following each other already, and and um. And I was like, damn, the brother look familiar, man. <laughs> and so we we get into that too, man, later on, man, because he definitely looked familiar, and I definitely remember the brother, man. Good brother. Um, I want to start off with just asking, you know, just where you from, you know, where where you grew up in grew life. Up, I grew up originally in Bushwick, and then from Bushwick I went to Best Star, Tompkins, Tompkins Projects. Okay, okay. Okay. So, how was your household? You know, a single parent family. Uh, you know, did you have moms and pops? How that? How was that working out? You know, siblings? Any siblings? You know, the dynamics of, I, of your life. Yeah, I still got mom, moms and, and pops. It's a blessing. Uh, yes. They did break up at a young age when I was seven. So you know, mom doing everything alone was kind of hard. You know, the environment was in. We came out of butcher, then we went to Best Time. Life at that time was hard, so she was struggling on her own to take care of her kids, you know? Absolutely. And it was just me, me and my brother. I got other siblings from my father, but for me and moms and actually from pops, it's, it's two of us. Yeah. So, and then, what, like, what did your influence look like where you grew up at? Was there a lot of influence? What was the negative influence? Was, did you have any positive? Because, you know, a lot of times, us growing up where we grew up at, a lot of times the, the positive the, the negative outweighs the positive influence, you know, in our lives. So how, how did that work out for you? It was you? hard. I mean, you know, we, we, we in the streets that we call the ghetto. And, mm -hmm. and, and you, you, got to, you, you, know, you got to struggle for things. You don't struggle, you don't get it. 
You know, true, and, uh, true and fact. You know, in those times, everything is, uh, you, you know, you got to get it to survive. If you don't, you know, you got to survive for you, for moms, you know what I'm saying? The things is hard. Absolutely. But, you know, the only, the only thing that uh, back in those days was that uh, there was more unity with, with, with the brothers. You know, we used to look out for each other. Uh, you, uh, brothers used to look out for moms, you know, and stuff like that. You know, it's different from these days now, you know, but, you know, it was hard. It was hard then, you know, times was hard back then, man. Absolutely. No question about it. So tell me a little bit, you know, when talking about running the street, you know, the influence, your influences, like when you lost that childhood innocence, you remember we all had that childhood innocence and then, you know, growing up in the ghetto, like you said, um, in the streets, we more attracted to the negative as opposed to positive. I don't think in our era there was really too much positive going on. Everybody was just trying to survive to get freaking through. Um, what was your change in life when you was like, you know what, like, I'd rather go this route? When I saw <clears throat> my mom have to work two jobs, it was like chaos for me, like I had to do something. I, I was the, the oldest, I had to step up. And you know, we all look for guidance to somebody. So I was glad at that time I was raised around adults, elders that was able to you know, teach me and school me the way it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And in those times I joined, I joined you know, whatever, half of the people joined the gangs. Right. I, I became a Latin King. I grew up in the ranks with the Latin Kings. Uh, we started running from one borough to now we're running two boroughs. Five boroughs, and and yeah, that's how I went. Man, I got into that gang mm -hmm. thing, man. That you know, thinking I'm, I'm joining a family, which you know, some of these uh, gangs are not really gangs. It was brought up to be organizations to uplift each other, to help each other, to be family, mm -hmm. and they turn, you know, some knuckleheads turn into something else, you know, to something else. Yeah. Right. So you know, so I had to go there because I had to take in a household. So I had to hustle. Mm -hmm. I had to go sell drugs. I had to, you know, join, you know, a group that could connect me to how to sell the drugs, how to get the drugs, mm -hmm. and how to do it. And, you know, and it was survival's a man, that's, you know. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's where we grew up. All right, so I know you've been arrested, you've been in prison before, so tell me, what was it that you got arrested for, and what was it like when you was getting sentenced? They were charging me with two bodies, and a manslaughter, and two kilos of uh, cocaine. Okay. So it was either, I was going to take a cop out or I was going to take it to trial. At that time, I was scared of, uh, you know, when you blow trial, you blow into double that or triple yeah. that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, and then, I, like I said, I didn't know, I didn't have no guidance, I didn't know what to do. And uh, I finally took it to trial. I took it to trial because I knew half of the stuff that I was being indicted, I actually didn't do. But because I couldn't talk, that, you know, this person did that, and this person, I was around the people, so I had to pay the price too, so I had to swallow it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So. So guilty by association. Guilty by like, association. Yeah, you know, you're you part of something that, that right now at this time, it was hot. You know, the gangs and the right. stuff, it's hot now. They're coming on TV, the news, they're doing this, that. So everybody's looking, oh, you're part of that gang now. So, you know, they're trying to slay you. Right. And, and uh, so I ended up taking that to trial. And uh, when I went to trial, I blew it. I got 44 years for that. So what was that like? What was that, that first night, man? Like, you heard what you just said? You blew 44. Well, yeah, forty four to like what was that like for you? What was your mentality if you remember, man, when you yeah, when you heard that? I mean, you know, you know, I'm tingling right now. I feel yeah. you know, you know, yeah. feel those things coming through yeah. right now. Like I was shaking, I didn't know what to do, I, I couldn't move, like, you know, I need to hear it again, like for the judge, you know, what you just said, you know, how much? Yeah. And uh like I said, I was alone. I you know, I did have my mom, but my mom was in the type of mom that could advocate for you, stand up. She hardly even knew English right. at that time. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was looking back at I'm doing this, this by myself. You know how you know I'm gonna support myself in there. How I'm gonna be able to do this, do that. If I'm gonna get visited, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna hang up. I'm gonna kill. Me. What I'm gonna do? Right. But that's what, everything that come into mind. No, no mm. question. And uh, it just started hitting from there. From there, the on, it just started hitting, man. And I just had to adjust to let myself know that listen, there's no changes, no going back out of this. You gotta adjust to this. You got to keep going. You got to keep fighting. It's either that or you're going to commit suicide or whatever. You got to keep going. Okay. And so what was some of your influences during incarceration? Like, did you, I, and, and the reason why I ask this is because, you know, I always say this, that, that there's that aha moment for, for a lot of us, most of us. And that moment for me came early. That moment came when I received 25 years to life. And so I said, I'm going to close that cell. 
And now I'm going to take that self-introspection of myself. And I know that you had that moment at some point in your life. So could you speak on that? So, you know, just, just like I was saying, man, uh, I, I had to make it, you know, that it's reality. It's happening. Yeah. Uh, I had to stop, think. I had to focus. I had to decide what I was going to do with what I'm going on that, that, that sucker route. Or I'm going to do this and try to fight. What in reality half I didn't even do. I, I didn't even commit. I was just guilty, like he said, by association. Yeah, right. So either you gonna fight and get a body here, or you gonna you gonna go the, you know, the, the faggot way. Excuse, excuse my French. And uh, I decided to go around. Uh, man, I came up under forty five. T forty five was at that time up there. Uh, mm -hmm. Santito, uh, Farmer, mm -hmm. rest in peace, Farmer. Mm -hmm. uh, of course. Bush and all them dudes up up there. Uh, man, I could, I, I could name like you know. We yeah. were talking the other day about Foots That's right. and Clinton. That's like, right. These are people Foots. that I was glad that as a young kid, I was growing up, influenced by, by adults that was already doing 25, was already, already in there for 13 or 14, 15 years, and they was able to guide me, uh -huh. you know, from where I was born, because I was going already to get into the gang thing again, looking for that family type thing, and I, I was going to forget about working on this case, working on getting home. Okay. And thank God for these old timers, man. These, these guys, you know, they they, they that me. Focus. So I already knew when the youngsters came in. I already knew, even though I was young like them, I was able to school them, like the adults school me, because I already I came to the to you know at the right time under the adults. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. what was you know that that one of those worst moments mm -hmm. that you've seen behind that wall, and and we all have them, man. Yeah. That we yeah. we look back <laughs> and, and we say like you know. Damn, this thing, this is serious in here. Right shit, yes, yeah, shit, yes, got real. <laughs> 1994, I think it was oh. January. I went to Clint Correction, the main. Oh. Just had God out there. Tension in the yard. You already know how the tension I is. Carvalho was there. Ooh, God, Amigo, was you already know it's, it's probably Rocksteady was there. A lot of known dudes was there. Addy Alpha was there. I can attest to that. All these dudes were there. So <laughs> there was a beef starting about a chain. Somebody took somebody's chain, whatever, and Rocksteady was going to fight with Kamayu in the middle of the floor. They were going to tie their hands up so that way they could just have the guns in his hand and there was, you know, nobody get in, whatever. Yeah, toe to toe. So I just walked into that. I walked in. First thing I come up, my three days off, you know, they put you on the three quarantine. Three day quarantine. quarantine and yeah. I get into the yard and that's the first ride. I got after that ride, they stabbed each other up. You know, people's back in Kamayu, a lot of brothers on this side is coming, you know, everybody going like on the war. And, uh, they laid us in the floor. We was five hours in that floor, man. It was shooting up in there. It, it, you know, it was the first thing I experienced that I never saw in my life. Yeah. I'm coming to the main for the first time. I'm coming to this max, and this is the first thing that I see right here. And I was, I was, I, 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 I was kind of scared to death. Like, absolutely, this is what I got to be facing throughout all these that I'm gonna be incarcerated. I got to look at this. Absolutely. So that was another preparedness to prepare myself because. It can happen to you. It, it can, can happen, happen anybody. to anybody. That's right. For whatever reason. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I had to be on point, man. Like, you know, and that was like the worst thing, man. Now let me let me uh, take it back for a second. I know you said you got sentenced to 44 years. Um, then you, the law library. Out those 44 years, you know, we talk about what you witnessed, what you've been through, how you spent your time. Yes. How much time did you do all together at that 44? All together, 14. 14. 14 years. What did you do while you were in there to say, you know what? Because a lot of people get stuck, right? They hit that, they hit that, that, that number and they, they, and they accept it. Mm -hmm. It's an effort, right? And they continue just wild out, adding more time on top of time. Uh, what I like to say, they lose hope. Mm -hmm. and, and when you lose hope, you just stop fighting, right? But eventually you found some hope and you say, you know what? I'm not guilty for all this shit here. Mm -hmm. I'm manned up, but I got to fight. It's got to be something. What made you say, you know what, let me get my ass up. Instead of going to the yard, being one of those that have to suit up, tie up, you know what I mean, go bang to bang. What do I do to take control over my destiny to try to put some work in to try to get back out? Freedom is a must. So, so, so when I got to Elmira, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Leo. Uh, <clears throat> he was from the... From the Cowboy something. He was one of them. Wow, the Cowboy. Cowboy. The Bow Busters. The Bow Busters. Okay. okay. They caught a couple of bodies. Was in there for years. All, all of them. The court and uh, he told me, man, you in our block. He said, you got to, I got to move you out of there, move you to G block in order to get you in this law library that's a portal spot. Get into the portal spot 
while you're in the border, you can work on your case. Mm -hmm. And in my sleep, you went as a paralegal, take the test, get in. So it, it kind of be that there was a riot that happened in our block with the kings, the bloods, over drugs, whatever was going on over there. And before that riot, just day before, I was moved to G block. I started as a porter in the law library, uh, and, and, and I started learning the books, the federal books. I, I started looking at cases that were familiar with my case. Uh, right. Everything that I could look off in a, in a journal, anything. I was up to date, I was on there. You know, I practically, if I could stay there the whole day, morning for the whole, the whole the, at night, that's why I was out in the law library, because I had to, I had to fight this, I couldn't stay still. And plus, I had to, those brothers that were willing to give me the chance and help me. Like, you know, it's not like I was by myself doing it. I had brothers that was willing to help me if I wanted help. If right, I wanted sure. help. Right. And you took the initiative, you put the footwork put in. Put it in. You know what I mean? Because there's I'm always hungry. someone there to give you guidance, but you got to put the footwork, can't I'm do it hungry. for you. Dad, have you got another question? Man? Yeah, but so, so I, I just want to know at that moment, um, you know, what, what, you, what would you say? brought on that growth and development. Like, you know, we, we, still, we still talking about the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. where, where we come through and we see those older individuals that pull us up, you know what I mean? So, like, just attach that and um, anything else you could remember, man, what um, led you to that growth and development, where you are today, you know? With your mentality, the mindset, you know what I mean? But be, being there, like I said, being taught, you know, from these, these brothers that were already doing 15, they were already in there over the years, and learning from them, you know, I took, I, 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 I took it to do the same thing. My brothers came in, I, I took it over for them to let them know how to do this, what the school was, you don't steal, you don't see, you don't talk, stuff like that. And I started meeting different individuals. You know, you go to, to the jail, you meet different individuals. You go to another spot, you, you see dudes that you never saw in your life mm -hmm. throughout your whole 15 years bitter. And I started to see not only the injustice, I, I went through a lot of injustice there with the police, man. Right. Like for things I didn't do, not being fed for the week in SHU, uh, I ended up doing 36 months in Southport. Mm -hmm. For the police getting staffed for something I didn't even do, I wasn't even there. <laughs> but because I wasn't the type of dude that, I was, I was, I was with a crowd that they didn't want to play with the police, joke around with them, you know that type of thing. Right. So because right. I wasn't that type of dude to play with the police, the dudes that were playing with them felt offended that we didn't join their side, so right. those are the ones that told and said, well, this guy the one that did that, that put the crochet needle on your chair, yeah. and when you sat down, that's why you got stabbed. Wow. So that's how I got caught for that. Yeah, but setup. I had nothing to do with that. They're 36 yeah. months to with that. The setup, the you setup. Know, so they said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, down the line, you know, you go ask you, you meet other brothers there, you, you move to another spot, you come out the box. And the new thing that started was that I said, hold up, man, if I didn't do certain crimes, can you imagine how many people in, in the prison system is, is here for maybe decades and didn't do their crimes either? There's something that I gotta do. Now that I got my certificate, you know, and, and I'm working in law library, this is stuff that I might could take beyond that. Okay, okay, okay. So, so what I did was that I gave a promise to the dudes that they were, like, you can tell these dudes was, because you know, you go to Rackers Island, yeah. there's a thousand dudes in the house and a thousand didn't do it. Everybody, nobody, everybody, did, everybody, nobody, nobody did it. You know what I'm saying? But, you come to these individuals that got 27 years in there, say they reached out to the world, they about to hang up, they they tired, they innocent, and you can just you can feel that vibe. Mm -hmm. And I decided that that's why I was gonna take my route. That my route was gonna be that if I came home and I beat beat the case, or if I was pardoned, whatever it be, that I would come home and look back. Nice. And make sure that I was able to help these guys that don't got no family. The family, you know, uh, a son is dead in the process of 25 years of jail. The mother died and stuff like that. So they don't have nobody. Mm -hmm. And these days, pro, pro bonus is gone. Lawyers want money. Hey, right, they want cost money. a lot of money. That's right. So where they stuck at, they're not going to write legal aid. They get them out because legal aid, they, they, they're not into that. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was going to come home. I was going to start a, 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 a team, and I was going to try to help these brothers get out. And that's what I did. I went. I came home. I started working for Tamir Law Group, and uh, he was my lawyer on my case, mm -hmm. a Jewish lawyer, uh, observant lawyer. And when I came home, he said, uh, "I got a job for you. You gonna ride, ride me, ride the, the firm around, me around to the courts, bring paperwork. You know, you gotta start from the bottom to the top. And right. Make it to the top. And sure enough, I started talking to him. I said, "Listen, I know you don't take these type of cases, but there's a lot of people dying in the prison, man." And I got this number one right now that's in my mind and it's ignorant me. And it was Roberto Acosta. Mm -hmm. 27 years. Uh, he came over as a politician, a doctor, 
and came to visit. I just saw that one. He came to visit. I stopped. And, and nah. the first week, they caught him with three bodies, a manslaughter, yeah. drugs, this, that. And he was a politician and a doctor in his country. He just came to see if he can move his stuff over here to become somebody over here. So sure enough, they took the case. Mm. And once they took that case, he got exonerated. Of course, that that built built my muscles up. That's I said, right. If yeah. I did this, <laughs> it's a must. I may want to go and do other things. And what I did was I started, you know, getting people to send me more cases. And I take the cases, and what I do is this. I know some people say it's wrong. It's like it's like they put pressure. I will go to every law firm, and I you know I make transcripts, thousands of copies of the transcripts, and I put pressure. You know, come on, man. You know, look yeah. at the case. The dude is, I, 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 I researched it day and night. This dude is innocent. He's not only a dude that's innocent. He's in there doing his homework. You already got made right here to see what the evidence is that he, yeah. it's clear. If you're not going to do it, don't bullshit me. You yeah. pay me back. I go to the next next door and do it. He did enough research for y'all. He, he did, he did the, the work already. Yeah. You got to go in there, present it in the court. You got a case. Now you got a state lawsuit, or whatever. When they come home, you good. Once you get exonerated. Right. So that's what I noticed, and I not, and I think that's that was helpful also, man, with, with your plight and your mission and your vision and and holding dudes accountable because we got a lot of them in there that they say they innocent, but yet they just they fall yeah, they back mean, and yeah. they they fall back into that to the yard and in the gym all day. and that's it. That's all they do. So you looking for those individuals that. That's putting in the work to for their freedom. Yeah, yeah. Up no, in no question. So I was able from that lawyer. I was able to, you know, you, you got the pattern now. You know how to do it now. You get up, you go, you, you go here, you go. And I had the pattern. I go over to my car, fill up those transcripts, place to place. Thank God. To today, five exonerated. So did you guys hear that? Five people exonerated. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that. L listen. I don't know what y'all want to call it, but I call that God's work, right? Absolutely. When you got when you got a brother, a sister, somebody that's putting in that energy that you're doing, that's what's called God's work. Because you can literally just sit back and say, I did my time, I'm out here, I can focus my energy, my time, my money into other places and do other things, but it's my purpose you feel because it's a, it's a purpose right. right like oh. what I do is, is my purpose right it's not my job it's my purpose in life for you to take that time that energy what's not only doing that only free five brothers like right? that's five brothers that have been sitting in prison for X amount of time of years but right? when you calculate that's over like more than a hundred years yeah. of brothers yeah. we interviewed a lot of brothers on this show who was you know wrongfully convicted like that's amazing stuff what that tells me, and for anyone that's listening out there, this is why we tell you to subscribe. Because you never know that you might have a loved one that's locked up, that's innocent, right? If nobody knows, nobody knows, right? right? So the right. word has to be put out that there is somebody out there. There is somebody with a cape on going and advocating. Let's, but do the work. That's right. But do the work. Don't sit there and expect someone else to do the work for you. Well, if you're truly innocent, Absolutely. fight for that innocence. Let me get something to it when you finish. Right. Go. So let's keep it gully, right? Gully. You don't see, we don't see dudes grabbing dudes' transcripts, taking them to places, to no. law offices to help them free a charge, not no. asking for anything. They just want to see them putting in the work doing their research behind that wall in that yeah. cage mm -hmm. for their freedom. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We don't see that. No. You don't do no. they coming that's home it. doing that. That's so this it. is unique in itself, man. Yeah, that's and why it's God's work. Applaud, I want to applaud you just for that alone, man. Yeah. And like, know that that's genuine. That's genuine. We don't get that out here, man. You know we don't get that. We've been in behind them walls together. You know, we all been in that in that New York State yeah, prison, man. Right. Dudes ain't coming home grabbing dudes transcripts and taking them to law offices yeah. to get them out. Absolutely. And they asking for a dime. Yeah. No, everything, you know, everything, like I said, everybody has the motive for most things. Now listen, whatever it is, you know, just the fact what I hear when I hear that, right, that there's hope out there. That there's hope, Absolutely. right? That's right. You know, and I, I told this story a couple of times that I was up in Attica with a guy named Woody that had 120 something mm -hmm. years. We used to work in a metal shop together, and you know, we, me and my boys, we used to go 
Uh, we'd go blaze and go to work and everything. And this guy, Woody, always had a chippy attitude. Like, for a guy that was doing 127 years, he's always, yeah, yeah. always, yeah, yeah, yeah there's always, yeah, and we used to bust this chop. I right? used to get high, we used to be like, Woody, why are you so freaking happy? Like, he like, oh, I can't wait till I go home. And we used to be like, go home. Like, buddy, you ain't never going home. I'm yeah. sorry to bust your bubble. But, that but yeah. Going. That kept him going. And he used to look at me, he used to go, it's gone. The minute that I listen to you and your friends and give up my hope, be the day I won't get up to come to work and have no purpose in life. I have to truly believe that there's somebody out there that's going to hear my story, right. that's going to believe what I got to say, and that I'm not guilty for the crime that I've been, commi I've been charged with. Mm -hmm. So you guys can come up here every day, get high, and, and laugh at me for smiling, but I'm not losing hope. Even if I got to do the whole 130 times, yeah, so what? I'm going to do it with the hope because the minute I lose that, that's it. It's over for me. The point that I say that is, people, is that if you subscribe to Live and Direct on the air, if you subscribe to, you know, Success After Lockdown, you might have someone that you truly know is truly innocent. Give them this hope. See if they can hear this, right? And pass the word on. Right? Because we're not one of those big companies. We're not advertising mm -hmm. like this. We're not putting it out there. Right? We're just a little community trying to get so back. We're just formerly incarcerated men and women who just come in here to show that it is possible to change your life right. after doing 27 and a half years, right. after doing 14 years, after me giving 22 and a half right. years to the state and the feds. Right? You put, put those together. Those are some numbers. Yeah. And you go to show you that the, we, we're men now who come from the bottom and who don't have to go back to what it was, right? Absolutely. We keep pushing forward, right? Because that's growth and development. That's what it's about. Don't allow your past to dictate your future right. and stay stuck that you can't do nothing in life because of what made it, the choices you made in the past, no right? And, we, we, and the thing is that we, that these programs that we got success after not done live and direct on the air, we, we, it's not only just that, we do prison reform. Yeah. You know, brother called right now today and said, listen, police harassing me, they, they not feeding me. We need you. We make phone calls. Yeah. We do parole letters. If we, try to, we gotta get you a, a crib to stay home, for you to get home, we do all that. We do yeah. whatever's needed for you to come home if you're hungry to come home and you're and you hungry to change. You so, know so after doing all that time that you did, how, how was it when you got out? What was that yeah. feeling for you? If you remember that day, because... I remember you left. I'm gonna tell you right now. What, what, what was crazy was that every, everywhere I looked in the corner, eight-year-old, nine-year-olds had the cell phones already. <laughs> you know, back then we had the brick phones. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the gray one, the gray one. The, girl had one the Motorola. Yeah, the fifth floor. It was still good when I grabbed it downstairs. But I seen the kids with cell phones and all the stuff, and I seen. Like right, like the world on, on change uh -huh. during that time that you know I was in that belly of the beast. I was stuck up in there. It, it was crazy. It was just you know, yeah. and not only that to to to, to start life again. Because remember, you know, this is not here no more. That house is gone. It's a supermarket. Yeah. Like you know, that was, that was, was my crazy. house. <laughs> yeah, well, that, you know, my house there. The laundry mat was there. This is gone. I just bought my, my clothes there. Like, so it, it was it, it was different, man. And, and like I said, if if you don't come out. With your two feet on the ground, mm -hmm. you slip, man. You know, you be back to what they say, those revolving doors, mm -hmm. what, what they wanted to be. The recidivism. Absolutely. You know? So, so yeah, well, it, was, it was scary, man. Yeah. It, it was scary, man. So let's talk about what else that you got going on, like more capitalize on what, what you're doing, you know, what's your plans for the future, um, yeah, you know, how people could contact you. you. You know, just so you know, we are doing a collab. We're working together yeah. diligently. We all have the same insight, the same view, and the same vision to get back to our community. But I'm going to let Abe um, give you a little ear feel, uh, feel full of what, what's going on and what we're trying yeah. to do. Talk Let's about go. what's Live and Direct. What, what Live so, and Direct's doing now? So live and Direct is, uh, we do things live and direct. We don't hear from his and he say, we get the story straight facts. And freedom is a must. And freedom is a must is, yeah. is the brand, and I'm glad that I, I, I got to meet Ant. You know that he, you know, it, it, like I said, that's God that yeah. stretched him out to come and reach, touch my hands, got me to you, and now we about to collab with something big in Connecticut. That's yeah. right. That yeah. Connecticut <laughs> don't have absolutely. That's right. You know? and, and we, you know, it, it's about to happen. It's gonna happen because I already know that you know we, we, 
they, they say great minds when they put together. It's Could achieve happen. anything. That's you know, right. We got a goal, and it's, it's, it, it, until the goal is accomplished, we ain't gonna stop. Absolutely, right, you know? absolutely. And still do the same. You know, still trying to help people out uh, to get home. Uh, the parole letters and stuff like that, and we just trying to get more programs that they don't have in this state, like New York. You know, they got Exodus all these programs mm -hmm. that are really helping people mm -hmm. coming home with, with different programs. Connecticut don't have this. Mm -hmm. And we need we need this out there, you know. We, even though we a scoop away, we only but half, you know, half an hour or two to Darien or whatever, two hours away from. We need we need what New York has. Absolutely, the hand, the yeah, ab absolutely. And, and success after lockdown. Success after lockdown. Be the first to say that we gonna we gonna coll collab with That's Live right. and Direct we in Connecticut, lives. and we will we will be contributing to stopping the gun violence with our Definitely. youth Definitely. in this country. So we yeah. will be paying a t attention to that. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. And remember, you heard it here first on Success After Lockdown in collaboration with Freedom Is A Muff, live and direct. So we got, a, we got a, a youth empowerment basketball tournament that Success After Lockdown created. And we're going to have a youth empowerment basketball tournament on July 15th in Newburgh. What we have is Exodus, Exodus Transitional Community Youth Basketball coming up to Newburgh. And we got Team Newburgh under success after lockdown. Okay, and got, okay. And we got the brother uh, uh, in Poughkeepsie. We got the basketball youth in Poughkeepsie. And we all coming together to have a nice tournament, man. To help, and this is our contribution, man, to giving back to stopping the gun violence in this country. Absolutely, absolutely. So stay tuned for that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, in case y'all didn't know, we didn't mention Live and Direct is a podcast. Y'all can go on. I'll let you tell them in a minute, A, hey, how they can um, get you on Live and Direct, to follow you on your TikTok page and all of that. Real quick before we get into that, let's talk about mental health for a little minute, right? You know, I think when we talk about formerly incarcerated men and women and coming home, we neglect to talk about the mental health behind it, right? A lot of people don't understand how it impacts us. What, 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 what are your thoughts about that and what, what do you think, you know, will be needed here for brothers and sisters coming home that has a stigma Right, we're about to change the stigma on mental health and what that looks like and opening that dialogue. What do you think about that? Like, we, I, I think that uh, it's a positive program, it's a needed program. Your program at that is a program that uh, is definitely needed. The teachers is us because we're able to teach each other. Like, we can communicate because we've been there, we know the situation. We could, you know, we, we, we could talk about what we went through. So, who better than to teach? The same ones that went to the situation than, than us. Mm -hmm. But the program is needed. Somebody still, when they come home, they still need to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, my, when I came home, I couldn't talk to my mother. My mother don't know nothing about prison. You don't mm -hmm. know the situation. She don't know what's going on, who gets stabbed, who don't. We need people that, like us, that can communicate and be able to, you know, to, you know, to vent out. You know? Absolutely. I, and, and I think, you know, it's no shame in dealing with mental health and talking about it. Um, you know, I, I was talking, we were having a conversation about this. You know, I just signed up for another trauma therapist uh, to see because it helped me get to where I'm at in life, mm -hmm. right? You know, I struggled through PTSD, you know, through, through depression sometimes and anxiety, right? Um, and it's just finding an avenue to talk about some things that we don't feel comfortable talking about people. I don't think it makes you less of a person. I think it empowers you when you talk about it. When you see something, you can address it and find a solution to it. Um, and I encourage more men and women, anybody out there that's struggling with some feelings that you can't identify with um, and you're wondering what's going on, seek some professional help. Um, address the issue. Because if not, then, you know what I mean, the, the issue will continue to grow and it'll leave you out of control. Um, and with that being said, um, let's talk about, yo, sorry, what you got going on here? Mental breakdown. 
Oh man, Sorry. that's a that that that, <laughs> that, that was a real. That's yeah. where Trump come from. Right? That yeah, that 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 right there. Yes, it all. That was some PTSD right the, there, right now. We got the MacBook Pro. We got the MacBook Pro. We got the iPhone. Yeah, that and yeah. And, and the MacBook also has mental breakdowns. Too. Yeah, that 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 ain't too smart. That phone. All right. But anyway, what, they call what, smartphone. Hey, look, tell everybody out there, man, how they can reach you, how to get in contact with you, how to follow you, how to hit. Um, subscribe to your page and see what's going on what it is that you're doing with the community live and direct on the air I'm in TikTok I'm in Instagram yeah. I'm in YouTube you can send me a message there uh, we do got a landline 203-543-4878 okay. Uh, okay you can you know message us for anything you know anything that has to do with prison reform uh, you don't know how to you know families don't know how to communicate with the prisoners for their sons their daughters whatever call us you know we we there to support it and, and whatever we got to support. You Absolutely. have an email address? Live and direct on the air at gmail.com. Bingo, there you have, have it first. And subscribe, uh, subscribe, follow. You know, a lot of people, that's it's right. free. That's now, right. You, know, you, you view it, you subscribe want, it. You want to subscribe and then unsubscribe. Absolutely. And if you like it or not, think about your friends and family that is in that situation and support it just because of that. Yeah, you know that, 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 leave, leave right. that thumb up, man. Yeah, that, 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 that's what I tell people that's all the right. time. It costs you not to subscribe, right? You know, but everybody wants that out there. They'll support the people that billionaires and millionaires, know. right? And they don't know, but they don't. your own friends and family won't support you and what you're doing. But that, the conversations that, we have is informative, educational, definitely. and, and definitely positive. 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 Definitely man. positive. And I think that's probably the reason. Nobody likes positive. Maybe yeah. we should go negative, right? I bet you we get a million likes and everything, Absolutely right? Absolutely not. I did that my whole entire <laughs> youth. No more negativity in this. And, 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 and there you have it. To all my brothers and sisters out there, man, don't forget to subscribe um, to our YouTube page on Success After Lockdown on our Spotify, An Spotify, Spotify Anchor, uh, Apple, Apple Podcast. Okay, you can send us emails if you want to talk go about to the something. Gram. Facebook, worldwide, TikTok. What's our uh, email? Success, Success after, after lockdown, lockdown at, at gmail.com, gmail baby. Merch, okay, merch. here you go. Got, got All right. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, right. Yeah. As you can Success see, we got, the, we got the merch. Hold up. We're going to throw it down. Come on, show it. All right. All right, hold up. This is where you get it, right here. The freedom is a must show, baby. You already know it, man. Right That's there. right. That's we want it. We got it. Let's read them all day, every day. We want it. We got it. You know, support the movement, man, because it's not for positivity, man. These are, we are brothers who are just like those in the streets, man. This is not scripted. This is the real deal here, man. There ain't no paper gangsters here. These are men. We are men who made some bad choices in our life and realized that we do better when we are better. Absolutely. Bottom line. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. With that no being more, said. With that being said, man. Peace and blessings, man. Peace. We want to thank you again, well, hey, amen. Absolutely, yo. And we're looking forward to the future. Yeah. Yeah. Tune forward, in. Watch us. Watch us. It's going to go down real it's big. Going go go no, listen, and, and, and my followers, our followers, man, I just want to thank y'all, man, for uh, giving us a season two, man. Yes, so we sir. appreciate you, man. So um, keep hitting your family and friends up, man. Subscribe. Hit yeah, that subscribe my, yeah, button. Yeah. And all my followers, follow success after lockdown. And vice oh, versa. Yeah. And vice you know, versa, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah vice versa. After lockdown. Yeah. Follow, follow Blob and Direct. Freedom is a must. And shout out to our production team, Mark and Art and Karan. For everybody that's involved in what we do, we don't do this alone. It definitely takes a team, man. And shout out to our team. For always showing oh, we up. We wouldn't be and doing this without cool. our producers. Ah, uh, for real. <laughs> <laughs> We're just that looking at that, each yo, other. 2023, make it a blessed one, baby. Blessed.